Uh, today we're going to look at a few computations of curl and divergence. If you look at the video that has dated 5-20-2014, there's a nice introduction to this. It gives some intuitive reason of where they come from. Uh, but let's, uh, let's first, by first remind ourselves what curl is. Curl can be thought of as the gradient operator crossed with the vector function f. So let's do an example of that. Suppose we have um, a function like this, f of x comma y comma z is equal to x z times i plus x y z times j minus y squared k. All right, so let's evaluate the curl of f. So if we remember, we talked about a way to get um, cross product. We could think of it like this very special determinant, i, j, k. Um, and then the curl, I'm sorry, the gradient operator, this is like all the partial derivatives of something. The partial derivative operators like that. You know, they call this the gradient. It's really a gradient operator. And it gets applied to all the components of the vector function. So there you go. Okay. And what we can do is, is, is start to evaluate this. Well, right, we remember we expand by the top row, put a little plus minus plus here. It really comes from determinants, but we're only allowed to determine, expand by the first row. You can't just use any row you want here. So this is going to equal i, the vector i, times the minor. Uh, and the minor of the vector i is this piece here. So it's going to be partial y, partial z, x, y, z, negative y squared. Okay, I'll just use a different color now. So I'm going to do minus j, the vector j times its minor. So the, vec the minor of vector j is going to be this, these two things together put into one two by two determinant. I need a little more space in that, so I'm going to make this a little wider here. So it's going to be partial, partial, partial x, partial, partial z, x, z, negative y squared. And then lastly, uh, we're going to expand by k. We'll expand by we don't have to span by k, but multiply k by its minor. So it's going to be plus k times the minor of k, which is going to be partial, partial x, partial, partial y, and then you have x, y, x, y, z. All right, so now we're ready. Let's keep going here. Well, this is going to equal, in the first case, you multiply those together. You're not really multiplying. You're taking the partial with respect to y of negative y squared. So that ends up being negative 2y, and you're going to subtract that partial derivative. Well, partial derivative of this, respect, this expression with respect to y, if y is constant, it's just x times z. x and z are exactly like numbers. This gets multiplied by i. Okay, so there's your first component of the curl vector. All right, so here we go. Minus, the next piece is going to be partial derivative with respect to x of negative y squared, but that's just 0 minus the partial derivative of x times z with respect to z. As z is the variable, x is the coefficient. So by taking the derivative of 5x, you get just 5. In this case, just x. So this is times j. And then lastly, you end up with plus, oops, sorry. I wrote plus and a k together. It's plus. Partial derivative of that thing with respect to x. Uh, partial derivative of x, y, z with respect to x. As x is the variable, y, z is the constant. So you have y, z minus this thing, okay? Derivative of that with respect to y is just x. And this is times k, right? So if you want to write it this way, you can. You can write it negative y, x, z, comma, negative. Oh, actually, that's really going to be positive x. So we'll distribute that negative. So we have comma, positive x, comma, y, z, minus x. Okay. So there's your curl vector. What did we say curl does? Don't forget what it does, so to speak. Um, here, here, here's sort of a way to think of it. Reminds us a little bit of torque. I want you to imagine um, you had, say, water flowing here, like through some kind of river, and I had a special kind of paddle wheel I stuck into it. Maybe it looks like this. It's got like a shaft that comes down, and on each end of it are these little rectangles, and then this over here, there's more rectangles. You could think of it as it looks like a ceiling fan in a room, except these little rectangles I've attempted to draw would be weird. It would be a very real string fan because they'd be perpendicular to
to the ceiling. So the ceiling fan would be sort of strained. All right, so I want you to imagine uh, we took this thing, we stuck it in the water. If the water is twisting or curling about this point, what we would expect is we would expect this thing to twist. Okay, and that's what the curl vector, curl vector uh, measures. It's that twist that, that we're experiencing at any point uh, in the point uh, along the way. Okay, um, so let's, let's consider something else. So here's, a, here's a fun fact. A fun fact about curls. The curl of the gradient of f is equal to 0. Okay, so the curl of the gradient of f. Now, don't forget what f is. f is some scalar function, so it looks like this. It looks like f of x comma y comma z returns just a number, a single value, not a vector value thing. And we know how to find gradients of, of vector functions, right? Gradients of vector functions look like this. It's partial f, partial x, comma, partial f, partial y, comma, partial f, partial z. Okay, the claim is you take the curl of the gradient of f, and you get zero. Now, we be careful about this zero here. You should make that a bold zero. This is really the zero vector, not the number zero. So it looks like that, however many components you have. Okay, so there we are. So let's prove this. Okay, so the curl of the gradient of f is going to be the cross product of the gradient operator with the gradient of f. So that's going to equal, and here we are, going to do another determinant, i, j, k. I'll plug along here. This is going to be partial, partial x, partial, partial y, partial, partial z. And then the second vector is partial f, partial x, partial f, partial y, and then partial f, partial z. Now, we already reviewed how to take cross product of things, so I'm not going to do this one a little bit more quickly. So here we go. The first piece is going to equal i times its minor, which is going to be partial, oops, forgive me for a second. It's going to be partial, partial y, partial, partial z, partial f, partial y, partial f, partial z. And then minus j, oops, that's another i, j times its minor, which is going to be partial x, I'm sorry, partial, partial x, partial, partial z, and then here you're going to have partial f, partial x, and partial f, partial z. Okay, and then plus k times its minor, which will be partial, partial x, partial, partial y, partial f, partial x, partial f, partial y. All right, let's take a look at one of these, and then you'll see some nice patterns for the rest of it. So let's take a look at this. That's why I don't run that space. So we'll take a look at this last one here. So this is going to be the k component of, of, of our curl vector. All right, so if we think about that, we're going to put those two together. So that's going to be partial, partial x of partial f, partial y. So we're taking the partial with respect to y of the function f first, and then the partial derivative of that express it with respect to x. So we can write this in a, well, let's, let's write this a little. We'll say minus, and then we'll do this piece. It's going to be partial, partial y of partial f, partial x. Okay. All right. And let's keep going. So this piece becomes partial squared f over partial x, partial y. Minus over here, we have partial squared f of partial y, partial x. Well, it would be nice if those two things were the same. And uh, I should have said this. Well, let's just let's let's pretend this is true for a moment. Let's pretend that the partial derivatives with respect to x and y and z of the function f are continuous. And the reason why we're making that assumption is because if they are continuous, then Clarence's theorem applies, and it tells us that the second partial derivatives in either order are equal. So that means that this thing here is equal to that thing. And now we know that at least our last component is plus 0 times k. All right? And that only happens if the, par second, if the first partial derivatives of, of the function are continuous, which they are, which means your second order partial derivatives. Uh, oh, sorry, forgive me. It, it only happens if your second order partial derivatives are continuous. And if they are, then you're OK, and this all works. And that's what Clarence theorem says. 
Similar reasoning will show you that the other things will happen. So for example, if you look through here, you're going to have partial, if you look at that, that's going to be partial squared f over partial x partial z. This one's going to be partial n squared, uh, partial squared f over partial x partial z, uh, partial z partial x in the other order, but Cron's theorem would tell us that those two things are the same. You get zero there also. So you have a zero j here and a zero i. Oops, forgive me. That's my j and that's my i. So this is the vector zero, zero, zero. What I wrote is the bold thing, the bold zero. All right, so that's sort of a fun calculation. You know, we know something else, too, if we, if we think about it. We learned earlier that a vector field, f, of x comma y comma z, or whatever it may be, is conservative if um, f of x comma y comma z is equal to the gradient of some scalar function. Okay? So if that happens, we know the vector field's conservative. But we just showed that the curl of the gradient of f is equal to 0. So that means, don't forget then, what's this? This thing here is a vector field. So we've just shown that if you have a conservative vector field, that it generates no curl. In other words, these paddle wheels that I talked about, when you stick them into this river of a and suppose the river is modeled with a conservative vector field function, that these paddle wheels, no matter where you stick them, they wouldn't twist. They would just remain stationary. Okay. So I think we'll stop there. We'll go into a divergence lesson next. Thanks for watching.